Betty Meifenwee Morgan is born in Melbourne in 1934. Her mother Gladys is strong-minded and astute, qualities no doubt required of a mother with two young children whose husband is away at war. Betty's father George is the opposite of Gladys. Betty never does things by halves. Woman's Day said that at 22, Betty has enough accomplishments to equip a dozen girls. Despite the limelight following her for much of her 20s, Betty is modest. When she hands over a suitcase of clippings and photos for safekeeping, she makes her family swear not to open it until she's gone. It's only after she passes they learn what a pioneer for women she was, for not just daring to dream big in a man's world, but for actually doing big. The first thing Betty throws herself into at 10 is the piano. She matriculates with honours in music and at the conservatorium completes all the AMEB exams, as well as composing many pieces of music. Betty also studies at the Pharmacy College and on becoming a pharmacist registers her own manufacturing chemist business where she develops Kalo Rem, a hangover remedy. Regularly making headlines, Betty is also successfully modelling and entering and winning beauty pageants. Her high profile sees her invited to many gala events with other celebrities. Shirley Bassey is there when Betty rides in a parade for the grand opening of Paynes at Williamstown. Then there is a fundraising Dutch auction of a new Holden sedan, where Betty appears alongside 50s English glamour model and Hollywood starlet, Sabrina. All this notoriety can only serve to make Betty's dreams more attainable. As a little girl, she dreams of racing cars, but remember, Betty never does things by halves. By 22, she is doing stunts for Kavanagh Hell Drivers. Reg Crash Kavanagh is rated the world's top stunt driver. At 24, Betty announces her engagement to Reg, who, being somewhat of a cad, has better friend a hundred pounds he'll never marry. But in this instance, Reg doesn't have to pay up, as Betty reneges. Although seemingly indestructible, hard-headed Reg obviously isn't used to such an ego battering and issues a Supreme Court writ against Betty, alleging breach of promise. Betty's confidence must be soaring when all her driving and stunt experience lands her the role as Ava Gardner's stunt double in the 1959 film On the Beach. The science fiction classic also stars Gregory Peck, Fred Astaire and Anthony Perkins. For her part, Betty is required to drive up to 110 miles an hour along a beach road at Barwon Heads in Victoria. Only a few months after filming, Betty takes part in the Ampol trial in Tasmania. She shares the driving in one of 12 Holdens entered in the rally. At the last stage of the 1200 mile three day race, only 40 of the original 60 starters are still running. Betty and her co-driver are out with a broken brake line just before the treacherous final hill. The only other female drivers are the last to attempt the hill. They have to turn back when their standard 10 begins slipping backwards, but they earn a lot of respect as many of the male teams opt for an easier route. Does this woman ever slow down? Hardly slowing down, and hardly a female sort of thing to do back in the day, Betty opens her own car dealership. In December 1959, to end a frantic year, Betty attends the film premiere of On the Beach with sales executive James Barter, whom she marries. They are the original power couple, clocking up achievement after achievement. Betty continues to earn respect in the motor industry 
and in 1962 she is invited to drive the first Chrysler Valiant in Australia onto the showroom floor. Such a stylish car for such a stylish woman. The challenges and excitement don't end there for Betty. She continues to model, play the piano and study accountancy. But perhaps Betty and Jim's biggest challenge is taking on the care of four of Betty's young cousins when individual tragedies strike first their father, then their mother. With her life now as full as it's ever been, does Betty take her foot off the accelerator? No. She plants it and graduates as a chartered accountant and in this capacity runs several businesses until she retires. In between travel, dogs, swimming and lawn bowl tournaments that is. Betty enjoys a very strong bond with all her family. Only four when she takes him in, she nicknames Darren MLB, my little boy. Betty and Jim are married for 60 years. Jim is able to care for Betty until Parkinson's gets the better of him. Just eight months later, with Darren and his wife Christy Lee at her bedside, Betty is lucid through the fog of Alzheimer's. She strokes Darren's hand and murmurs, my little boy. She passes peacefully. To have passed by the bowling green and seen Betty in her whites amongst the other silver hairs, it might be hard for some to imagine the action-packed life she lived. But hey, don't ever underestimate an old girl. <laughs>